so what I was what I was going to work with first and foremost is like I just think I'd be starting with um like you basically but just introducing us to who you are what yeah you're yeah doing. and then I'm going to jump in you know as you get towards the end and just fill in some blanks if there is any or oh, whatever yeah, yeah you know, how fine. I know you and what I feel yeah. and then we'll just yeah. open up the dialogue man yeah. yeah all right so who are you bro so <laughs> okay <laughs> so how, how long we got <laughs> um who am I well uh I'm everything but nothing. Um, my name's Israel Ajozi. Um, you know, uh, born London, UK. Uh, you know, uh, parents are of uh, Nigerian heritage. Um, I, I lived in the UK for like first uh, 10, 11 years of my life. Uh, then uh, my parents took me to Nigeria because of just unruly, unruly child, you know, thought that, you know what I mean, we're gonna um, straighten him out. Um, it did kind of work uh, to, to some degree, to some degree, but then it kind of got worse on another, you know, got even more unruly. Um, so they thought, oh, well, well, you, you know what I mean, the, the people in my family in Nigeria was like, well, I think you should take him back <laughs> to the UK. He can't fit in here, you know, he's, 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 you know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't seem like this system over here is suit for him. And if he keeps continuing down this road, he, he, basically, you, you, you're just going to end up dying. You know what I mean? Because someone, someone will just end up killing him. Um, so then, the, then I've got, I got brought back. Um, um, and then, again, it, it kind of just went from bad to worse again. Um, but it was more kind of like just mixing with the wrong crowd, uh, hanging around with the wrong people. Getting in trouble with police, getting in trouble with the law, getting locked up, um, and I believe that's where the kind of turnaround, the major turnaround in my life, kind of started. Um, <clears throat> I was like 16 at the time. I got locked up, youth offenders um, institution. Um, came out, uh, but just before like my 18th, um, and that's where the, the turnaround kind of happened in there. Um, so obviously while I was in there, there was, uh, cause I was into boxing and actually before actually getting into people always used to say, Oh, why don't you, you know, do boxing and you know, you're a big guy, you look strong, you know, like, you know, you should, you'd be, you'd be a good boxer. And, and I did kind of like boxing, but I was just getting distracted, you know, just getting caught up with the street lifestyle gang members, affiliation, and, you know, while I sat all that time, I could have probably been going to the gym, going boxing, and staying out of trouble. So, um, but, so while I was in there, um, uh, one of, uh, one, one, actually one of the prison officers, he was really into boxing as well. He used to buy, like, the, the boxing magazines, and, like, mm -hmm. after he'd finished reading it, he'd pass it on to me and say, yo, look, you know what I mean, look, look at the thing, and we'd talk about boxing, and he'd, He'd be telling me about fights and stuff like that. And it's like, wow, like, so he was saying like, yeah, like when you get out, like, you know, it goes, cause like, as you can see, like 90% of the people who, who, who come in here, they end up coming back. You know, even while I was in there, I saw quite a number of my friends that, you know what I mean? They'd get released and you know what I mean? They'd come back and meet me again in there. I'm like, wow, like, you know what I mean? It's like, kind of like just getting on, you know, getting caught on the hamster's wheel. And he was like, look, get out, like, you can do something with your life. You know, you're still very young. You know what I mean? You can take up the boxing. I was like, cool. So long story short, came out. And um, yeah, within like a week, two weeks of coming out, um, I signed up to a boxing gym near me. It was, um, I was living in uh, West London at the time, um, uh, Labour Grove. <clears throat> and just up the road, pretty much about like, 10 minutes walk away there was a gym called all stars so the people they were saying oh yeah like you know oh, oh you need to you, you know you you want to go all stars first before i went to all stars i went to some other gym it was in king's cross somebody had told me about it and they said oh go there uh, there was one there was a, a, a world champion boxer his name was robert mugabe and he, he was he was he was like a middleweight champion world champion everyone says oh go there like you know, like there's top top class people there and stuff like that. So I went there. Um, this Robert Mugabe wasn't there at the time, but I, I went there. I went there like a few days and the guys were showing me how to box and stuff like that. I remember they put me in the ring with somebody. 
he was about the same size as me, but he was more experienced. Anyway, we're, 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 we're kind of like sparring or whatever. I'm just wild. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was just boxing off pure, pure strength. But anyway, I knocked him down and like people were like, whoa, like, you know what I mean? Like this guy's like, he's only mm -hmm. just started, he's only like just started like a couple of weeks. He's, he's fresh. Like, well, how come it's like, you know, but, um, but the trainers were still saying like, Israel, you, you need to brush up your, 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 your skills. Like you're, you're very mm -hmm. wild, you're strong. That's not a problem, but you just brush up your skills. So I was like, oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> so I got, I got, you know what I mean? He, he was teaching me how to do the skill stuff. You know what I mean? And then it's like, and then, um, and then I was talking with someone one day and he goes, oh, what, what boxing did you go to? And I told him, I said, oh, the one in King's Cross. And he goes, he goes, oh, that's, he goes that's a bit far. He goes, he goes, why don't you go to All Stars? He goes, I thought you live at Labrock Grove. And I goes, yeah, I do. He goes, there's one just like, like 10 minutes away from you, bro. Like walking distance. He goes, why are you jumping, hopping on train, going across London? And there's mm. one right there on your doorstep. And he goes, it's All Stars, like big gym. Like all the champs go there, and I was like, "Oh yeah, really?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." He goes, "Yeah, he goes, yeah, you need to go all stars." So I was like, "Okay." So next day, packed my bags, went to all stars, walked in, and like the, the trainer was like, "Yeah, what, what are you here for? How can I help you?" And I was like, oh, "I'm here to box." I was like, yeah, I, yeah. I said I want to box. He goes, "Oh, you want to box? Do you?" Okay. And it's kind of like that Mr. Miyagi kind of story, karate kid, you know, kind of thing. Okay, all right. Cool, yeah, all right, go and change, go in the change room, go and get changed, start shadow boxing. So this guy's teaching me how to shadow box now. So I'm, I'm trying to tell him that, like, bruv, I've, I've done sparring, I'm ready, like, you know what I mean? And he's saying, <laughs> no, no, just, just keep shadow boxing, you know what I mean? I did that for about two weeks. And like, I'm seeing man sparring in the gym, I'm seeing man getting in the ring. Mm. So I'm like, bruv, I can, I can, I can, I deal with these guys, you know. <laughs> so he's showing me, like, look, learn your skill, learn your craft. You, know, you don't worry, you're gonna, you get your chance to come in. And I remember one day I came in. I goes, I goes, I, I, I said to him, I goes, I'm strong, you know. I remember, I'll never forget. I remember saying to him, I goes, I'm strong, you know. I said that to him, and he goes, really? And he went, okay, all right, cool. He goes, come tomorrow, and we see how strong you are. I came the next day. Man, he said, you're strong, isn't it? put on the gloves, put me in the ring. He put me in the ring with a guy, it, not half my size, but he was smaller than me. Cause I was like, I was like a like, light heavyweight at the time, cruiserweight, light heavyweight. He put me in with a middleweight guy. Okay, fair enough. We can expect a lighter person to be faster, which he was, of course. But this guy boxed my head off. And I was just, you could see that, of course, it was plain and clear that, of course I was stronger than him. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's free, mm -hmm. but he, 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 and then he just kept boxing me, kept boxing me, and then uh, you know, and um, every every at the end of every round, I kept coming back, and 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 the trainer was saying, "Yeah, you're strong, isn't it? Like, don't don't forget, you're strong, man. Like, you you <laughs> don't worry. The, the, you <laughs> keep using that strength." <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, okay." And the rounds were going on, and obviously, I didn't I didn't have good stamina, so I was getting tired. Mm -hmm. So my man, you know, his experience now, man's, man's having me up on the ropes. Like four, four rounds. It's like, yeah, yeah, like what, you still want to go? Yeah, like you, you're still strong. <laughs> like, but the pride, I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm good, I'm good. He goes, you sure? Like, okay, cool. So like went another two rounds, like just ridiculous, like just outclassed me totally. Like, and then he came out and then he goes, right, like, yeah, cool, get ready. We see you tomorrow, innit? Like we go, we see how strong you are, innit? Like <laughs> <laughs> on to you, yeah. And I was like, what? What's this going on? So I, I remember walking on that day, thinking, do I really want this? Is this, <laughs> is this for me? Like you know, maybe like I've just picked the wrong thing here. Like total, like when I told like like just demoralize me like just like no like i'm literally searching for the spirit here like what what, what what's going on here like it, it, this can't be real but for some reason next day came back and i remember i walked through the door and i remember him saying he goes ah oh, you're back and then he thought okay okay all right so you got heart basically you, you, you're sure so you've got heart okay cool. and then he goes listen to me i'm gonna teach you how to do this thing Trust me, I've seen it all. Get in that mirror and start shadow boxing just the way I told you. <laughs> and, and I was there for like 
I was there. I was shadow boxing for about three months. No, no, no word of a lie. Like nothing else. Shadow mm. box. After you shadow box, I was doing the skipping. Yeah, you do your press ups, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. but come in. Every time I just kept coming in, it's like mirror, bruv. You know, you know, you know. What it is. Yeah. <laughs> shadow boxing in that mirror. You keep your hands up. Keep jabbing. I'm showing you the techniques. Keep doing it like that. That's how that. That's how you do it. And mm -hmm. like three mm -hmm. months after three months. Man said, right, boom. I remember walking in one day, I was shadow boxing. I didn't even think nothing of it. I was just shadow boxing as normal. I was kind of getting, I have got into the rhythm of it. So it was kind of cool. And like you just said, Israel, you're up. Gloves on, boom, in the ring. Come in the ring. Put me in the ring with the same guy. Mm -hmm. Same dude. And I was like, bang, bang. <laughs> see, I laughed in front. He goes, see, see it right there. He goes, he, can't, he goes, he goes, you remember you boxed that guy. That's the same guy you was in the ring with mm. like three months ago. And you couldn't lay a glove on him. Now he's confused. Mm. You understand? He doesn't know like what, what's going on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you work it. And from there, it just went on and on. The following year, um, I entered, um, uh, 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 what had happened was my first couple fights, my first fight, actually, which was what, what was what was happening, was they were taking me to the shows because amateur boxing, you take it to the shows, and obviously the different trainers from different gyms will try and match up their boys. Mm -hmm. Truth, I was kind of big and I was a bit muscular. Like every time the, the other trainer saw me, he would be like, "No, nah, no, nah, like I'm not putting him in, in with my boy." You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. and they'll be like, yeah, but he hasn't had no fights. Like, man, you know, you, you don't even know what he's like. But I think they were just like looking at me and just judge me by my That's size right. and thinking like, right, man, he looks powerful, man. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not risking my boy with him. So like, mm -hmm. I was going through months, so, like, I couldn't get no fights. Like they were saying, why, what's, what's happening? Like, they go like, no, but they won't fight him. They kept taking me to all the shows. I remember I went to one show and my trainer goes, don't, don't take your top off. Like just, just, <laughs> <laughs> just walk there with the, you in the jacket because sometimes you have to take your top off to weigh in and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I remember he was kind of hiding me and he's like, and I couldn't understand at the time. And he's like, he goes, just don't take your top off. Just like, keep your top on, like, you know, because man's, the, you know what I mean? And I remember like the trainer, I remember distinctly the trainer was looking, he was talking and he was looking over and looking at me like, mm, like sizing me up. You know what I mean? I just remember he just went, nah, 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 like, allow it. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, 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 sure yeah. enough, that night, night, I thought I was going to get a fight. And then, and then what had happened was there was a super heavyweight, which was the weight above me. Mm. And that dude was meant to fight. And his opponent pulled out of an injury. And I remember mm. the trainer came and he goes, if you don't mind, I know your boy's looking for a fight. I know, he goes, my boy's heavier, but if you, if you, willing to, you know, risk that. He goes, he's only had like a couple hand fights. He goes, I know your boy ain't had no fights, but if you want to thing. So yeah, my trainer yeah. was like, okay, yeah, yeah, all right, cool, cool. Bring it, let, let match them up in it. Let me do the thing. <laughs> so I went in there. Again, I, I overpowered him and everything, but definitely he, he, he was more experienced than me. <laughs> so I lost that fight. I lost my first amateur fight. You know what I mean? But everyone was saying, well done, you did well. But, you know, it's just that it was a, a matter of experience and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then from then, I just started winning all my fights. I won the junior, uh, uh, junior, junior heavyweight championship. Um, um, uh, and then, uh, obviously, after, after 18, then you go into the senior ranks. Uh, went into the senior. Um, uh, and then I won twice uh, ABA championships. Uh, London ADBA Championships, uh, 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 you know, uh, won England Championships. We're just winning, like, yeah, just, you know, I mean, occasionally, uh, yeah, I did lose. Uh, yeah, in total, as, a, as an amateur fighter, I had, I had 35 fights and I'd lost five. Um, yeah. And those were, like, in the finals, like, finals of the ABAs. I got to the finals one year, I lost. Uh, I, I remember I got to the semifinals one year, I lost. I got to the finals one year, I lost also as well. But I was losing to, like, top calibre kind of people. Mm -hmm. I used to box for England as well. And then, you know, so, and then from there, obviously I, I was amateur for a number of years. I thought I turned professional, turned professional. Um, again, I was being hyped as like, yeah, this is the new Mike Tyson on the like scene. The same, bro, man. <laughs> like, you know, you know what I mean? In the papers, like I was getting, making headlines, you know what I mean? 
My first professional fight was on Sky, uh, Sky TV, um, Euro, Eurosports. My first one was on Eurosports. Then my second professional mm -hmm. fight was on Sky. And like the commentators were like, boy, like he's looking good. He's knocking people out and stuff like that. And then about a year, a year or two into my professional career, what had happened was my my mum my was ill and then my mum passed. And then I, I'd had a fight scheduled. And obviously before the fight, about about like about a month before the fight. Month and a half before the fight, my mum passed, and then uh, um, so I, I the, the promoter was saying, "Well, do you want to call off the fight? Do you want to like, like, shall we cancel the fight?" And I was like, "No, no, 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 like, I'm good, I'm good." And he's going, "You sure? Like, you don't have to think, you don't have to take the fight. Like, you know, we can postpone it. It's fine. You know, people will understand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know, like, you've sold lots of tickets and stuff like that, but people will understand. Your mum's passed, isn't it? And uh, but I was like, no, no, no." I don't think it really hit me at that time. So right. did the funeral, buried my buried my mum. We buried my mum like about it was about a, like about a month, month before the fight, definitely. Uh came back, because uh, it was in Nigeria, went to Nigeria, did the funeral, came back to London, UK, got back in the gym, was training. And then the fight time come and basically there was just nothing there, like on the on the fight. I, I, I'd, got, I'd thought I'd gone through the routines, mm. nothing was there. And the person who I lost to, good fighter, but wasn't on paper. It was like, yeah, okay, that'll be a good fight, but Israel will do. It. Yeah, that that that's supposed to be Israel. That's Israel's fight. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. not like okay, yeah. Everybody's expecting like, yeah. It wasn't even like okay, maybe either. It was like Israel will do him. There's no if buts or maybe. It's not. That's not your caliber, you know mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say? You know, it's kind of like maybe like, I don't know, you know, Chelsea or Man U, you know what I mean, playing another West Ham or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah. we expect you guys to win, you know what I mean? That's, that's the kind of caliber it is. Um, and then I lost it. So, so that was that first defeat. So that kind of took me a little bit heavy. So they were like, oh, like, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. they said, okay, your mom's died. That's what the whole thing about it is. Um, you know, maybe you should, uh, you know what I mean, just take a bit of a rest and then you can come back. So I was like, okay, cool, no worries. So just taking a bit of a breather and I was being, sp I, was, I got sponsored by, I was being sponsored by a travel agent. Of course, as boxers, your agents try, try to get you sponsors. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Get money and stuff like that. So I, there was a traveling agent in Camden Town that was sponsoring me. And um, they would like they would pay for certain things. Uh, uh, they gave me a bit of money as well, the sponsorship money, and they gave me a bit of things so I could obviously focus on training. And then about I remember like about a week or so after the fight, my trainer said, uh, uh, "Not my trainer, my, my my agent rang me up and he goes, listen, he goes, um, the travel agent that's sponsoring you basically they're saying like they want to give you two weeks holiday in it, like anywhere you want in the world." <laughs> You can go, yeah, yeah, they said, like, anywhere you want in the world, hotel, everything, everything paid for. Basically, you just make your, your spending money, basically. Just tell them where you want to go. And, like, it's jiggy, isn't it? And I was like, okay, cool, cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. So, for some reason, you know, most people will say, okay, yeah, let's go to Spain, Miami, or something. Like, somebody, you know what I mean? Like, let's go to <laughs> Las Vegas or something like that. For some reason, I said, okay, book me a week in India and give me a week in Israel. And then they, they were like, yeah, okay, cool. Boom. So they, they booked the they booked the, the, the thing. Mm -hmm. the, the thing they said, yeah, you're staying in this hotel, boom, you're gonna be there. <laughs> like bang. So I've gone. So I've gone. So I've, so the trip was here, go to India, and then from India. I was taking a flight to Israel and then staying, and it was like a week, a week each. Yeah. Let me just ask you why, why India, Israel? Was there any? 